What most people were not aware of that actually Daniel was some sort of a role model for Doug Polk early on in his poker career. The battle started when Daniel posted a video of him on a podcast claiming more rake is better, which of course sparked a storm of heat in the poker community. Doug responded by making a video and criticizing him for his comments. The Twitter battle then ensues and Daniel denies saying exactly what he said and he attempted to clarify. He said, what I stated about microstakes players losing less with higher rake and less pros just happens to be true, they last longer. Daniel then needles Polk for using live poker clips for his videos, gets one of his own videos blocked for copyright infringement. Doug gets 17 videos taken down and this is an amount of work and of course as a content creator you're really gonna be upset about that. So he gets 17 videos taken down for copyright infringement and he guesses that someone is targeting him and reporting him. He's not directly saying that uh, Daniel is involved but saying that someone is probably reporting him. And then in a very, very yeah, surprising way, Doug gets seated next to Daniel in a super high roller ball and needles him by wearing a more rake is better t-shirt. Doug also buys a more rake is better.com billboard, which leads to the poker world using the more rake is better statement as a meme. At some point, Doug made some sort of a diss track about Daniel. If the rake is too high, it's actually better. If the pros aren't playing, it's actually better. The feud continues as Daniel posts a bunch of Twitter polls and Doug responds in one of his YouTube videos. More videos from Doug follow as Daniel explodes, threatening people with violence and using very offensive language live on Twitch and he gets banned for it. I will break your teeth if you come step to me and I will feed them to you anally. How about that? How about that? Doug returns from his poker YouTube retirement and released a video about this whole situation with Daniel and Twitch and making fun of it. Things are not slowing down as Daniel claims Doug got, and I'm quoting here, spanked like a petulant child, which is very questionable to say on social media. Doug fires back, bringing up Daniel's blackface scandal and yeah, they're going back and forth a bit. After a while. Doug officially challenges Daniel Negreanu to a heads up battle. The surprise of everyone, Daniel accepts over Twitter. And you need to understand that heads up is Doug's bread and butter. Daniel being of course the massive underdog, therefore as it seems for many, not a very smart decision from Daniel to accept that challenge. It seems they have a hard time agreeing on the terms, but after a while they do so and set the terms. In one of more recent videos, Doug recaps the history with Daniel and announces the heads up challenge. Both playing 200, 400, 25,000 hands, two tables online, whereas the first couple of hands were played live. Doug posts on Twitter that Daniel has been catching up and closing the gap and seemingly working on his game. For the most part, it was pretty obvious that Doug had the challenge and he had um, always a rather commanding lead over. Uh, Daniel. So he kept expanding his lead from session to session. Daniel claims Doug gets very lucky, Doug claims the opposite and we have seen the footage where both claim that their opponents are just being very lucky. I seem to get really lucky on the turn. That's that's where I'm, I'm, I'm sensing good vibes uh. on the turn. It seems hopeless up until the point that Daniel goes on a massive heater with winning close to 400,000 in one session, making it possible to come back. At this point in time, he was already down close to a million and definitely made it more possible now to come back. The only session that really hurt was the one that you covered here on your channel, the plus 385,000 win for Negreanu. Massive comeback, Daniel Negreanu, question mark exclamation point uh that one really sucked because it was just so many buy-ins and it was near the end so all of a sudden it went from i was just a lock to win to now it's you know i was probably going to win but it was a little bit more in play that that one stung a bit all hopes fade away as doug reclaimed a winning sessions right after and started scratching the one million dollar profit after 25,000 hands doug wins the challenge in a remarkable fashion with one point $2 million in profit. 
So of course, a very profitable uh, heads up challenge for Duck. And I think it was good for, for poker, it was great marketing. And I think it's something that a lot of, including myself as content creators, we jump on it, uh, try to make content around it and try to bring more awareness and, and, and just educate people, use the hands that are being played for making content to also attract new players, that's what we need. So I think for poker, it's a good thing. And this is here just my personal opinion. Uh, I still didn't like the way certain things were handled from Daniel's side, especially the way he, uh, he was talking towards Duck. And you guys know me. I also had my situation with Duck, but I think we sorted it out. So I'm trying to be very objective, but I, don't, I just don't think as a role model as Daniel is for many that he should be acting in the way that he was acting. And I had the impression that he was very disrespectful towards Duck. Of course, Duck is also a very polarizing character, but I think uh, Daniel was stretching it a little too far. I understand as a public figure, you might have pressure and there might be things in the background that we don't understand, but just for my taste, I um, I was always looking up to Daniel as well, up until the point he made very questionable statements about the rake. And yeah, it seems to me he was just trying to defending uh, the poker sites instead of speaking up. So something that I didn't necessarily enjoy and definitely has changed my opinion. I hope I was able to bring uh, more light into this whole uh, situation. We will see if more heads up battles are coming. I think this is something that uh, is a good thing for online poker. And I hope you guys have enjoyed that little recap. I've been getting a couple of questions on Instagram, like people that just got new or, or got into poker and are not so involved, don't realize, okay, what's What's the situation there? Uh, is it is it a heads up league or why is this heads up battle so popular? So you need to understand in poker, there's not a league. This was really just um, a situation between two uh, people that wanted to sort out things with playing heads up poker against each other. And I hope they do so. At least I get the impression that things have slowed down and um, it's at least a little more friendly than it used to be and i hope it remains like this remember we should all be uh, very respectful towards each other and we don't necessarily need to agree on everything but i think yeah just uh, being a little nicer to each other uh, can especially when you have a large following and you are the role model of of, of many uh, and even if you're not if you're just a normal dude then just let's be nicer to each other especially in these days i think uh, this is something we should all strive for i hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little recap, that little documentary about the heads up challenge. As you know me, I was very excited about it. I really enjoyed following it. I was also on the Joey Ingram um, commentary and yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it. So I hope more is uh, coming, maybe a little bit more friendly away, uh, but we will see. See you guys next time. Bye bye.